In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear brakes, pads, and rotors on this Jeep Grand Cherokee. These will be located behind your rear wheels. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you want to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so both of your rear wheels are off the ground. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing all five of our 22 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off, we have a clear view of our rear brakes. We're going to start by removing the caliper from the area. Let's use some pliers and remove this clip along here. To remove the clip, we'll be using some pliers and a small pry bar. Carefully make your way in between this area and gently pry. Once you've done that, we'll be taking hold of this with pliers and remove it from the caliper. A quick inspection and set that aside. Now we can have a look at the back side of the caliper. We'll be looking for our two caliper bolts. These are 18 millimeter heads. As for the lower one, I'll get this nice and loose. We'll move up to the upper one. Inspect that mounting hardware as you continue. Replace it as necessary. Get this one out of here. Now we can start separating the caliper from the bracket. To do that, we'll be looking where the two caliper slider pins would be located. That's behind these plastic covers. We'll pop that out of place and use a seven millimeter Allen head socket to remove each one of these caliper sliders. There's one of the covers. When removing your caliper slider pins, you want to give them a quick inspection and make sure they're not rotted or damaged in any way. Now we can remove the inboard pad here. This has a couple clips that go up into that caliper piston. I always like to give my pads a quick inspection just so I can see how they've been wearing. While we have this in our hand, let's pay attention to the piston and the boot that goes around it. This is just a dust boot, but if you see any fluid coming out of this area, that means that the seal internally on the caliper is damaged and you'd want to replace the caliper. This one looks fine. The next thing we'll do is push back this caliper piston and give it one more inspection before we set it aside. I'll use my caliper piston compression tool here and slowly push this in. Quick inspection. Set this aside so it's putting no pressure on your flex hose. Let's move along to removing the rotor from the area. Commonly, you can take hold of it and give it a little tug and it should slide right off of there. If it's stuck in place, use one of your original lug nuts. We'll start it on here, just a couple threads. After that, use a hammer. When using the hammer, we wanna to try to hit along this area here and not necessarily on the braking surface and definitely not hitting any of the threads on our studs. Once it's broken free, we can remove it. Let's set this aside. Now that we have the rotor off, the next thing I always like to pay attention to is my parking brake shoes. You'll have two of these, one along each side of your wheel bearing. You wanna inspect them and make sure they still have plenty of meat and they're not damaged in any way. Let's go ahead and clean up the mating surface on the hub where the rotor will sit. You can use a wire brush, Get this nice and clean. That looks pretty good. Hit it with some parts cleaner and then some anti-seize. Okay. 
let's continue on with preparing our bracket. Remove the outboard pad. This one's frozen in place. We'll continue on by cleaning up the caliper bracket along each side here. You can use a wire brush. We just want to ensure that there isn't any buildup that could restrict the brake pads from moving properly. After you have these areas cleaned up, we'll be continuing on with just a tiny bit of high temperature lubricant. We want something that won't melt away. Let's get this back over to the vehicle. We'll continue cleaning and lubricating the caliper itself now. Use a clean rag and we'll come right inside this caliper port. Just want to press it through using a screwdriver, being extremely careful not to damage or scour the rubber. Try to remove any debris from inside each one of these ports. Use some high temperature caliper lubricant and come right along the caliper piston here. We'll get right inside the center. And then along the back side of each of these two ears. Let's move along to the caliper slider pins. As for the caliper slider pins, you want to make sure they're clean and free of any obstruction. We'll use some high temperature caliper lubricant along each of these two. We don't need to necessarily coat the threaded area. We'll take those caliper slider pins and put them in place in the caliper here. We'll just make sure this end is flush. Do the same for the other one. Now we can install our inboard brake pad. We have the three tabs that go into the center of the brake caliper piston. These aligned. Press that in there. Double check to make sure it is secured and flush with the piston itself. Now let's have a look at the outboard pad. You want to ensure that you're using the proper pad. You'll find that you have a wear indicator on one corner of each one of the outboard pads. Match it up with your original. We'll take this and slide it right in position in the caliper there. Now we can install the brake caliper bracket. Slide this right on over those pads. Align the brake caliper slider pins and start mounting those in. Now we can start each of these in by hand using our seven millimeter. Once they're both started, you can bottom them out. Now we can torque each of these to 20 foot pounds. I'll be using a pry bar coming straight through the center of the caliper to hold it. Do the same to the other one. Install your protective plugs. Now we can take the caliper and we'll put it in position. Slide it right on over the rotor. Starting each of these caliper bracket bolts. Once they're started in, you can snug them up and then torque them to 89 foot pounds. The same to the upper. Now we can install our brand new locking clip. When we do this, we'll be coming in at an angle. We'll slide this into the ear of the caliper. Now we can start swinging this up and we'll start putting the rest together. Double check to make sure everything's secured properly. Now we can reinstall our wheels, start on all five of our 22 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out Get the wheel safely back on the ground. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll be torquing each of these lug nuts to 115 foot pounds in a crisscross manner.
torqued. Okay friends, we showed you how to install the rear brakes on one side of your vehicle. At this point, you want to make your way over to the other side of the vehicle and do the exact same thing. After you've done that, go ahead and pump up that brake pedal till it's nice and firm and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.